Hello, I am Marisol Lazarella. I am a program coordinator on disaster risk reduction with the Post-Conflict and Disaster Management Branch at the United Nations Environment Program based here in Geneva. This lecture video will give a brief overview on key international agreements related to environment, disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, and sustainable development, and reflect on their relevance to environmental education. First of all, let us explore how environment, disaster risk reduction, and climate change adaptation are linked. Many disasters are attributed to climate change, yet the most recent scientific studies concur that climate-related hazards mainly include sea level rise, droughts, and regionally more frequent and heavy precipitation or heat waves. Whereas disaster risk reduction seeks to address other hazards including geological hazards such as earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions, which are more sudden risks, climate change adaptation on the other hand emphasizes responding to more slow onset hazards and future risks in an uncertain changing climate conditions. Both disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation have strong links to environment. Environmentally degraded areas are more likely to aggravate disasters and climate change impacts, while at the same time disasters and climate change can also cause more environmental degradation. Examples of this include degraded coastal areas which will be more vulnerable to sea level rise or tropical storms, or if forests are cut on steep slopes, this is more likely to cause landslides and avalanches. A number of international policy frameworks have recognized these important linkages between environment, disasters, and climate change. Here I would like to mention five major international frameworks of importance. The first is the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, which was endorsed at the Third World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction in March 2015 in Sendai, Japan. The Sendai Framework establishes global, regional, and national priorities for reducing disaster risks for the next 15 years, and for the first time includes recommendations to invest in sustainable ecosystem management for reducing disaster risks and building disaster resilience. The UN Convention on Biological Diversity, or the CBD, also recently passed an important decision during its last conference of the parties in October 2014, which is represented by national governments. This decision links biodiversity conservation and ecosystem management to climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction. This is important as the CBD is a binding agreement and signed by 196 countries. The Ramsar Convention on Wetlands of International Importance also, also recently held its Conference of the Parties in June 2015, which passed a resolution to integrate disaster risk reduction in wetlands management. This resolution has the potential to reach and impact over 2,000 Ramsar sites around the world, totaling over 200 million hectares of wetlands. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, also known as UNFCCC, through the Nairobi Work Program, has also recognized the importance of investing in ecosystem management and restoration for reducing and adapting to the impacts of climate change. And finally, the Sustainable Development Goals, which was endorsed by the UN General Assembly in October 2015, include several targets that mention both ecosystems, disasters, and climate change. In conclusion, several international frameworks are now calling to governments, the business sectors, and all of civil society to invest in ecosystem management, restoration, and protection to achieve our shared priorities of sustainable development, climate change mitigation and adaptation, and disaster risk reduction. Countries and communities are now seeking ways to implement these broad international frameworks, and this is where environmental education can play a role in providing concrete solutions to interlinked global challenges, such as disasters, climate change, and environmental degradation. Environmental education can help support and accelerate implementation of these international policy frameworks. More policymakers, decision makers, planners, and practitioners need to be aware of environment, disaster, and climate change linkages 
and the environmental solutions available for tackling these global problems.